Good morning, and welcome to the Basilica of St. Adelbert. All of the music and readings for today's liturgy are listed in the worship aid, which is available at the entrance of the church. Please be sure that you have a copy, as no further announcements will be made throughout the Mass. And please return the worship aids to the entrances of the church when you leave. Please rise and join in singing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, some people might feel that this feast sets too high an ideal for families, especially if the virtues of the Holy Family are highlighted 
without also showing that they had to face many issues not unlike those of our own households. The Holy Family knew the struggles and hardships of ordinary life, but kept God at the center of their hearts and lives. As we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we come to our Lord Jesus Christ and seeking his mercy, pardon, and peace for what we have done and what we have failed to do. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christe eleison. Christe Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Most high 
Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. to give us the shining example of the Holy Family. Graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children, a mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is hurt. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children and when he prays is hurt. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all of the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. You will be blessed and prosper. in 
the heart of your house. Your children, like shoots of the olive, around your table. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And over all these, put on love that is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts and that peace into which you are also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. 
Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the rise and fall of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Israel, of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. The Holy Family of Nazareth, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, are put before us by the church this weekend as a model for our own families. We call them the Holy Family, but that does not mean that they did not encounter problems and difficulties in their lifetimes. Just as every family faces problems and overcomes them, or to put it another way, has to carry a cross on occasions, so also the Holy Family had their own challenges. There are many challenges come to mind as we read sacred scripture. We can imagine how misunderstood both Mary and Joseph must have felt when Mary conceived Jesus through the Holy Spirit and they knew that their story would never be believed. It must have been very difficult for Mary when Joseph was considering divorcing her when they were betrothed before marriage. When Jesus was born, it was the most difficult of all circumstances as the birth took place in an animal's stable. We see images on the news of families fleeing war-torn countries as refugees and the Holy Family had a similar experience as they had to flee Egypt to escape the greed of an insane man named King Herod. Mary and Joseph suffered the awful experience of losing Jesus for three days when he was 12 years old, as the Gospel of Luke tells us, and is another option for today's feast. We do not hear of Joseph after Jesus' disappearance in Jerusalem and being found in the temple. So we often presume that 
Jesus began his public ministry in Galilee, but Joseph wasn't there to see it because he had died. The Holy Family suffering one of the greatest pains of all families, the pain of bereavement and separation through death. Jesus' public ministry must have taken its toll on Mary. Simeon had predicted in the temple that a sort of sorrow would pierce Mary. We can imagine one such occasion from Mark's gospel when Jesus returned to Nazareth and his relatives came to take him by force, convinced that he was out of his mind. Not a very pleasant experience for any family, no matter how holy. There was also the pain caused by a rhyme made up about Jesus. Behold a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, was often chanted when he came into towns. And there was the growing hostility toward Jesus by the Jewish authorities that must have caused huge pain for both Jesus and Mary especially as it became increasingly obvious that Jesus was going to have to pay for his mission by dying. The saddest moment of all came when Mary, a mother like any mother, watched her son die hanging on a cross. So what kept the Holy Family together and reasonably sane throughout all these trials and crosses? The answer is quite simply, love for each other and love for God. Jesus' love for Mary and Joseph and Mary and Joseph's love for Jesus and the love each of them had for God the Father. We can see Jesus' love for his mother displayed so well, when dying on the cross, he asked his close friend and, di and disciple, John, to look after her, saying to Mary, woman, behold your son, and to John, behold your mother. What holds our families together also in times of difficulty is love, love for our family, love for God, and forgiveness that flows from that love. Love which triumphs in the end, even if for a while, love may have to take the form of some honest talk. When discipline needs to be given, it's not to be given except in love, or it's reduced to abuse. If ever our families fail in any way, it is because of a lack of love on someone's part. Whenever our families are successful, it is because they are places of love. I believe that the greatest threat facing families today is quite simply not spending real quality time together. We are so busy working or individually socializing, watching TV or absorbed in those devices that are supposed to be smart, that we have less and less time for each other. What a pity. There is a story I heard about an attorney who lived a considerable distance from her elderly father. Months, or should I say, over a year had passed since they had been together. And when her father called to ask when she might visit, the daughter detailed a list of reasons that prevented her from taking the time to see him. The court schedule she had, meetings that were on her calendar, new clients, research, and the list went on and on. At the end of her recitation, her father asked, when I die, 
do you intend to come to my funeral? The daughter's response was immediate. Oh, Dad, I can't believe you'd even ask that. Of course I'll come. To which her father replied, good. Forget the funeral and come now. I need you more now than I will then. As I said earlier, I believe one of the greatest threats facing families today is simply that we do not spend quality time together. Yeah, we may be in the same room at times, but we're not even talking to each other or engaging in any kind of behavior that shows that love flows between us. When we love our family, we want to sacrifice ourselves by spending time with them, real time, doing real things. And all the more so when we realize that by not spending time with them, we are depriving them of our love and hurting them. Just as the Holy Family survived all its crises through love for each other and faith in God, we pray during this Mass that our families will conquer all difficulties through love for each other and faith in God the Father. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord has promised to hear the prayers of the faithful, and so in faith we lift our hearts and intentions to him. For the universal church, may the Holy Spirit continue to breathe courage and grace into the hearts of her leaders. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of peoples and nations, may the Holy Spirit strengthen them in wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with disabilities, may God's strength accompany them in their hardships. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of believers, may the example of the Holy Family 
inspire us in living lives of virtue and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For all who have died, may God's love and mercy surround them and bring them into his everlasting kingdom, especially the deceased parishioners of the Basilica of St. Adelbert. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear and answer the prayers we bring before you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time. So that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Ugeni et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith and to rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us bless each other with some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Oh, 
sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders, his right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. Our God has appeared and lives among us. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord all the earth, break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of song, with the trumpets and the sound of the horn. Raise a shout before the King, the Lord. The sea and all within it thunder, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, and the hills ring out their joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the peoples with fairness. Our God has appeared and lives among us.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements today. The parish offices will be closed on Monday and Tuesday this week uh, for the holiday. We will have 8 a.m. Mass only on those two days. There will be no 4 p.m. confessions or 5.15 p.m. Mass until Wednesday, January 3rd. This Friday, January 5th, we will have our first Cor Jesu of 2024 from 7.30 to 9.30. It is an evening of adoration, reconciliation, praise, and worship. I would encourage you that maybe 2024 be the year that you take time each month for this opportunity for Eucharistic adoration as part of your Eucharistic revival exercises. There will be no coffee and donuts this week, but join us for coffee and donuts again next Sunday. And finally, some of you may not have realized, but on Christmas Day, there was a different Christmas bulletin, thank you, than there was on the Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Advent. So it has the nativity on the front with an angel at the top. Today's bulletin, by the way, is Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, so you can tell the difference. If you didn't pick up the Christmas one, please do so. It has a message for me, to you, and your family for Christmas. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.